Melinda Haynes, license number 102308. So let's carry on with our conversation of narcissism. So I've told you before that I'm kind of frustrated with the um, general cultural aspect, the viewpoint of narcissism, not only for the general public, but for therapists in general. There's just kind of this, this attitude of, you know, they're bad, they're, they're, they're not treatable, run away, you know, therapists counsel the family members, you know, just run, go no contact, um, this kind of attitude. And I'm thinking, we're professionals, we're supposed to, to have hope for people. We're supposed to be looking at treatment options. You know, if there is no cure, if there is no treatment, we're supposed to be looking at coping skills and ways to effectively manage and deal with, with things that are maybe not the, the best, most perfect 100% situation. Right, but that's not happening, and so I'm just starting to get frustrated because I'm, I'm researching, I'm looking at articles, I'm seeing, I'm seeing these things. Even you know in the psychology today, where they're they're posting about how um, these guys are predators, they groom their victims, you know, for their narcissistic supply, stuff like this. Well, so recently I ordered a um, continuing education packet. Now I have to do continuing education units to keep my license. So I, I get the narcissism one because I'm like, this is right up my alley. I'm really interested in this. I'm gonna, um, gonna get this one. There's a three pack, okay? So there's three, there's three experts in the field talking about it. One of them is like, you know, they basically can't be treated. So sorry for your luck. Um, you know, here, let me talk about all the ways that they are not um, healthy or normal people. There was another one that's like, I don't really know if they're treatable, but here's some things that um, they need to know. You know, they need to know that they're, um, they, you know, there is no I in us. Um, you know, they're creating their own situation, things like that. Things like, I'm thinking, are they even going to listen to that? Like, I don't know. I don't think they're going to listen to that if you tell them that. And then there's this other guy, and I'm like so, so excited when I found this out. This other guy, okay, and I will put his description and his information in my description box. This guy is saying that it's more of a um, interpersonal. Let me let me see what it is. It's an emotional and interpersonal interpersonal dyslexia, and so what he's saying is that you know the brain is just not firing correctly. Like something's going on with the 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 looping in the brain. Like we get stuck in a pattern of relating to people, and that it could be because of you know this buildup of cortisol. That, you know, people with narcissism actually have smaller brains, you know, in clinical studies. And that, you know, this could impact the way they perceive the world, the way they are interpreting the information, and the way they're then responding to it. And so when I saw his training, I was like, oh, yay! Like, this is so important to me because we're starting to now to look at it from a different aspect besides these guys were born evil. They will stay evil, they will die evil, and if you interact with them, there's nothing but loss and destruction. And I'm thinking, no, you know, there's there's a different way. There are other ways to deal with this. We need to start opening up our eyes, taking off our blinders, looking around and trying to understand how can we deal with this better. You know, 20 years ago when we were labeling people with borderline personality disorder as, as crazy and untreatable, you know, that didn't help any. It wasn't until somebody came along and said, look, try dialectical behavior therapy, try trauma therapy, try trauma-informed, you know, approaches to treating people with borderline. It wasn't until then that we were all, oh, okay, it's treatable. Well, that's what we need to do now with narcissism. We need to start looking at ways that we can actually understand it instead of just labeling it and running away from it. We need to understand it and try to start finding effective ways to deal with it. So for those of you who are in a relationship with a narcissist, please understand that yes, you need to have boundaries, you need to guard your heart, of course, of course, but it's it doesn't necessarily mean it's totally hopeless and you just have to run and that's your only option. Some of us don't want to run from our narcissist. Some of us, you know, we're committed for whatever reason, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a child, maybe it's a spouse, maybe we're stuck at a job and we have to deal with somebody who's narcissistic, whatever reason it is, whether it's moral or financial or whatever, we don't necessarily have the option to just run around and cut ties with whoever comes into our life. We don't have that option. You know, in the real world, sometimes we have to still deal with people. So let's start to look at these other options that are available. So I am super excited about this. I'm going to post more about this approach, and I hope you guys are going to watch. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching.